Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be walking you through the new Azure Open AI Studio, the platform and what all we can do within it. Here we'll talk about the different models that we can deploy, things like ChatGPT and DaVinci, then how we can test them out in the playground prior to integrating with an application so we can start to understand how that model might behave given the parameters we're putting around it. Once you have deployed uh, an Azure OpenAI service, the studio will then be available to you. We'll talk about all of these different blades and how each might matter to you. To start off, we're actually going to be going to the management section and the models. Within here, we can see the different models that are available to us that we can then deploy. In order to use any of these models, we first need to deploy them. You can see I have here a couple already deployed out. It's as simple as clicking the model that you're interested in and hitting deploy. And it'll just ask for a name. Then you can use that model uh, within your applications. Once you have deployed any of those, you can see them up here in the deployment section. So you can see that I have a chat GPT uh, along with a DaVinci and an embeddings model deployed that I can use. You also have the ability to include your own data files and train your own models, but we won't be touching on that today. Once you have these models deployed, you can then take a look at the two different options we have for the playground. Within here, we have the chat and completions, and these represent two underlying different APIs that are available to us, the completions API and the chat completions API. And these behave a little bit differently and have some different use cases. For something like chat, that's where we're gonna wanna create some kind of virtual assistant, something that needs context can carry um, on with a conversation as it's going along and the completions better for just one off things that we're trying to do. Summarize this text, uh, create some content for me, etc. So let's get started in taking a look at the chat playground. When we path here, we will see three different panes that are uh, making up what we can do and how we can modify this model a little bit. And if we look over here, uh, you can see that we have that chat GPT model deployed here. I had named it chat. So that is what this chat playground is going to be leveraging. That's the only model that I've deployed that is available here. Within this left pane, you can see how we are going to set up this assistant. Um, there are some examples within here, but the basic idea is that we need to give this model some instructions. We need to tell it what it is and what it needs to do for us. And within there, we can also give it a couple of examples to put it on the right path and start to understand what we are best trying to get out of it. And if we go to one of these examples, um, we can see that there are a couple different options here. In this case, I'm gonna select the Xbox customer support agent, and you will see that it populates with a system message. You can see some details about it within here, but effectively what this is saying is giving the model uh, and the assistant some instructions. So you can see within here, you are an Xbox support agent. Uh, it has some information about saying, if you don't know what the answer is, it's okay to say you don't know, um, only provide factual answers. This is very important in creating these assistants uh, to ensure that we're covering edge cases and covering um, any kind of hallucination that the model might then uh, undergo. And you can see it also populated with an example. So in this case, the user is asking how much is a PS5 and the assistant is saying, I don't have that information. I'm really just an Xbox assistant. So we've done this setup within here. Um, we have added some information about how this model needs to act, how our agent needs to uh, interact with us. So we can then test out what's going on over here. So in this case, I will ask, what is the highest selling Xbox game? 
and we'll see some information about the underlying model within here. Uh, ChatGPT was trained uh, on a data set up to 2021, <laughs> so that is the uh, end of its knowledge. And you can see some information here about what was the highest selling game. So if I ask it for, let's say, you know, last year, uh, what is the highest selling game? Xbox game in 2022. It should tell me that it doesn't know. <laughs> in its context, that is a future event. It hasn't happened yet. Uh, it doesn't know. We'll get some information about what is most anticipated, but you know, not making up an answer for us. So really a uh, pretty good example and puts us on the right track. So this is the way, the one way that you can create uh, some kind of virtual assistant and agent within here, and you can go back and forth uh, carrying context between this conversation. So that's the outline of the chat playground. Uh, the last thing to highlight are there are some additional parameters that we can set. These um, are quite configurable uh, with things like temperature, how creative uh, do you want this model to be, uh, along with how many tokens get, can get passed back and forth uh, whenever calling this model. So a good amount to configure uh, within there. I'm now going to jump over to the completions playground because for my use case, uh, I think what I'm going to try to do uh, is a little bit more in the completion space. Just like we were seeing in chat, we have the different deployments that are available to us. And here I can see that I have my chat GPT along with my DaVinci. And very similarly, I can look at some examples of uh, how to get this kicked off and how to start it. So a lot of information uh, within here. Uh, in this case, let's go ahead and take a look at generate a job description. A little bit different of an interface than the chat playground. Remember that this is really just a completion. So saying, uh, give it some instruction on some set of information, and that's really all it's going to be doing. So we can see it's populated with a little bit of text here. And if we go into generate, it will start to generate some text for us. Now, one thing to highlight as this is generating text, I'm actually getting a little bit of a notification here saying, hey, you might want to switch over to a different deployment. And this is where you can begin to play around with, again, within the playground, you know, what model is going to fit best for your use case. In this case, within the examples, um, it's pretty uh, well understood what is going to likely give you the best results. So I can actually click that button and it'll switch this deployment over to the DaVinci um, 03 for me. And you can see some information about here uh, about what it created. So uh, completing this prompt uh, that I have given it. For my use case, uh, I actually have a small application that I'm running into a little bit of a scaling issue. I have a greeter application that paths in a user's name and their job title, and I want to have some kind of creative, interesting, fun uh, greeting for them. And uh, I'm really running into scaling issues in that for every title I have to create uh, interesting thing going on, uh, some kind of interesting text, and I can only create a dictionary so long. Um, so within here, I'm actually going to try and leverage a model that can handle a lot more um, scaling than I'll be able to. So I'm going to start giving this um, a prompt. Now, pretty simple um, prompt uh, to give it to start out with, and let's see how it does. And within here, I'm actually going to uh, give it some examples as well. So I'll say example, JD, uh, I'm a chef. Um, let's say something like, hi, 
JD. Uh, hope all is well in the kitchen. Something like that. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Now I am going to effectively give it something to complete. So let's say I have a friend named Charles and he is a um, let's say accountant. So we've just given it a pretty simple amount of uh, information within here and let's see what happens. So uh, there we go. Good day, Charles. Wishing you a great day in the world of accounting. Perfect. Let's see if we try to generate again. Keep those books in order. So we are already um, a little bit better than my application that would just spit out the same thing every time. So we have a little bit of flexibility in here, really easy to give it a prompt. And then we can now take this and move it into our application. And we can see that with a, within up here. Uh, we'll actually go ahead and click view code and it actually gives you all of the uh, code that you will need to integrate this into your application. So this is where we will stop for now, um, but join me next time and we will work on actually integrating this uh, with a web application that we have set up. So thank you.